Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we'll be making uh, uh, one of my favorite recipes. I've got a few favorite recipes, uh, my ultimate favorites, obviously, as you know, my Coco Shea recipe. My second favorite is um, the double oat soap bar, and it's a really, really easy recipe. Um, we're gonna be making our own oat milk today to replace the complete water phase in this recipe. It's really easy to do compared to other milks. You can create uh, oat milk in a really really short amount of time uh, compared to a lot of other milks so it's uh, something that I've been doing for a while uh, I've actually it's quite new using a hundred percent oat milk for the water phase whereas I used to just add um, I used to just deduct from the two 25% water to oil ratio I used to do 20% so 200 grams for my life solution and add the 50 grams at trace but um, I haven't been doing that the last few batches so I'm still quite new with doing 100% uh, oat milk for the water phase and I have to say that I immediately realized the creaminess and the really really nice slather it produces so definitely it's um I have noticed a massive difference whereas adding just a little bit at trace or using the uh the complete water phase for oat milk it's really is a really big difference you will really notice um, in the skin feel and the uh the lather you actually get from it it creates a really really nice creamy hydrating lather all right so just to go over the recipe overview this is um a two kilo oil batch and uh, these, this makes uh, 12 big bars because I use this nice big mold for these particular bars. They're really popular in that size too. They last an incredible long time. Um, they weigh minimum 220 grams in the molds that you'll see at the end of the video. Um, but generally on average they sit around 240 or 250 and they last, uh, they just go the mile, like put it that way. Um, this is a 70% olive oil recipe and a 30% coconut oil recipe, my favorite combination, cocoa olive. And uh, it's full oat milk for the water phase. Uh, again, the standard 3% for raw sugar, 1.2% for both pink salt and sodium lactate, and 0.7% for the um, natural vitamin E. So that, that's the standard you'll find across um, my recipes I always use those additives uh, so let's let's get into it um, the next step will be creating our oat milk right so here we're going to be making our oat milk um, I measured out 50 grams of organic rolled oats uh, that works out to be 10% oat milk, whereas uh, usually when you buy oat milk, it's between 10 and 15%. Uh, but I like to sit around the 10% uh, for this particular recipe. I've actually never gone above 10%, um, so I just find this to be the sweet spot. And also the leftover grounds uh, the oat milk from uh, blending all this together I actually put aside and I'll put in the freezer as well as the oat milk and I use that in the recipe as well so nothing goes to waste here so you just blend for a good minute or two and just make sure that the oats are really fine and you put it in a nut milk bag I got these nut milk bags from eBay they're really inexpensive I got five big ones for $28 um, I got them on eBay Australia and if you're in Australia they're really inexpensive just um, jump onto eBay and get them and uh, I'm sure they're available wherever you are in the world like in the States or in Europe or India they're really easy to get and they're really inexpensive and best of all you can reuse them so you just dump the oat milk in there you squeeze as much of the oat milk out as possible if you can't get like 100% out of it out that's fine it's going to go in uh, a little airtight freezer safe container that i use so i'll just quickly i'll just dump it in there with no problems and um, i then pour them out into milk trays and i freeze them and then i leave them for about 24 hours and then i um uh, add the lye to the ice cubes 
cooking when I'm ready. And I, the reason why you want to do freeze the milk because I have tried just adding lye to that current lye, the current oat milk that you see here, but it just curdled and it burnt, so you don't really want that to happen. So it's best to actually freeze it. And I add the sugar and the salt in here as well, as you know, as you see in the recipe. I add three percent raw sugar, one point two percent pink salt to my water phase or the oat milk in this particular recipe, and I just mix as much as I can in. It doesn't have to fully dissolve; that's fine. It will dissolve when you're doing the heat transfer method on your coconut oil. You don't have to do a heat transfer method. You can just melt your coconut oil and combine the olive and the coconut oil together and then add to the um, lye solution or the oat milk lye solution to the oils when they're around the same temperature and that's fine as well. But as you know, if, if you've watched all my, all my previous videos, I always work with the heat transfer method and it works great for me and it just, it's a personal preference. So you don't have to do it exactly this way but I still highly recommend you you freeze your oat milk because it will definitely curdle on you and it will turn brown and it will have a slight smell. I've still soaked with oat milk that has done that in the past and after about a week it's fine. It returns to normal colour. The bad odour goes. It's still great on the skin. It doesn't there's no difference. But it's harder to work with because it's like a slimy, you're working with a slimy lye solution, so it is a bit of a headache to work with, but I just, for simplicity, just freeze it, it's just so much easier, and plus you can actually do the lye solution inside. Right, so as mentioned before, when you actually uh, mix lye with ice cubes or ice water, you don't actually um, have to do it outside because it doesn't create any fumes. Um, I do, uh, I have noticed like the last few times I've done my, um, my oat milk and even just normal water in the freezer, it hasn't frozen completely. I'm not sure if it's the salt or the, the sugar that I'm adding to it that's not letting it freeze 100%. Plus I'm also putting mine in a hidden compartment at the top of the freezer so I think it doesn't get as cold as like a normal shelf in the freezer. But that's okay, I don't mind that it's a little... Uh, a little melted because as long as uh, as uh, by weight 60% is ice then it won't create any fumes so it doesn't have to be 100% ice so I'm comfortable it being a little fluid so that's totally fine and as you see I made a little bit of mess as of a mess when I tried to get it out um, we, I added the uh, oat meal that was left over from creating the oat milk to the soft oils and I just blended that in really well and now I'm just slowly adding in the uh, sodium hydroxide to the ice the oat meal ice cubes and it's melting slowly and I check the temperature as I was doing it and it's sitting around 20 degrees Celsius and when it's finished completely finished melting it's about 52 degrees Celsius which is the perfect temperature to add to my coconut oil so I actually did do a heat transfer method for this as well this took a good 10 minutes to do and it is really really cold here in Sydney at the moment it was 13 degrees um, uh, this afternoon so um, I had to give it extra time if it was summer I would have just completely melted straight away uh, or even if it's spring or autumn and it's not so cold as it is you know hitting winter uh, it would have melted within two three minutes heat transfer method but this took a good 10 minutes of stirring so if you are in a cold climate just give it extra time or if you're worried about doing the heat transfer method and it's not going to melt in time like I suggested earlier Earlier, it's completely okay in melting the coconut and olive oil together, which is totally fine. You can just combine the oatmeal lye solution to the to the curry oils, which and you won't have any problems uh, doing it that way. Whichever way you decide to do, it's completely fine. Right, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in the unmolding process.
So this is um, just such an easy recipe to make. Uh, oat milk is really, really easy to make. And almond milk and um, rice milk are really easy to make as well. It's not that they're difficult to make. It's just that it's more time consuming. You generally have to soak them overnight or for 24 hours and then you rinse them and then you kind of blend them in. But with oat milk, I find by using a stick blender for a minute or two is more than sufficient. I have tried soaking it as well, like the other type of milks, but it just creates a sliminess to the oat milk that I didn't like at all. It's like a starchy feeling. So I, I just, I didn't like that. So I actually just stopped doing that. And, um, I just started to blend it in normal with a stick blender into the water to distill the water and it's created beautiful oat milk. I've even tasted oat milk that way as well. I've uh, made some oat milk at home for myself and still doing it the same way. It's tons better than what you buy at the shop so I highly recommend you give um, creating your oat milk, oat milk a try it's really really easy and of course really inexpensive it, it just does not it just does, doesn't cost as much as you know buying them and i found i was actually wasting quite a lot buying them because i would throw out 
uh, large quantities of it before I could actually use it all because after you open it you consume it within generally a week and I treated it as the same as that as well like even though it was for soap making I wasn't consuming it I was still mindful of you know any spoilage or anything in my finished product after you know the curing time and all that so I like to work with fresh uh, milk so it's just really really easy to do and I hope you give it a try and uh, let me know how you go with creating your own milk I just find it's just one of the easiest things to make and put in your soap recipe right so we made it to the end thanks for so much for watching remember to share and like this video and subscribe to my channel head on over to my facebook and instagram and uh, follow me and like me there and i really love uh, seeing pictures of people that try out my recipes so feel free to dm me on instagram i try and respond to everybody um, i'm actually going to create a new playlist on my channel and I'm going to be interviewing some soap makers here in Australia uh, whether they're hobbyists or they have a business in soap making so I've got a few people lined up I'm not going to name anyone currently but I'm talking to a few people and so far I've gotten a few people that I follow on Instagram and I've been actually following for a while um, say yes to uh, doing the interview so stay tuned for that i probably will do that in the next my first one anyway my first interview will be actually i'll, I'll name her i'm sure she won't mind um catherine from coconut lux so i'll be having a chat with her and we'll be talking about her soap making journey and i think it's really important for people to get to know their soap maker and uh getting more information about their journey and, and what soap making means to them just as you know ellie from ellie's every day gave me an opportunity to discuss what this my soaping journey was and what soap making means to me and i would really love to hear what you know other soap makers journeys are what soap means to them so i think it's just it's just a really great way for soap makers to network together in australia and we don't have that big of a network here i don't think there's too much here so i thought it'd just be a great way for soap makers to network with each other and communicate and see um, what other soap makers are doing and you know their journey and their experiences and I thought it just provides a platform for everyone to share so I'm hoping that um, people would respond well to that and they would like uh, me to do interviews in the future but I definitely will be doing about five of them five or six of them um, but the first one up will be um, Catherine from Coconut Lux and I've been following her for a while now too and I just absolutely love her soaps they look really really nice so I I'm just hoping that uh, viewers will really like to see her journey as well. And I'm sure her followers and people that uh, follow her and buy from her would like to see her journey too. So I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to actually doing those interviews. And let me know what you think about that in the description box. I'd love to hear feedback on that as well. Until next time, everyone, happy soaping and safe soaping. Bye for now.